What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, a question involving some masses and some pulleys. This is really going to be an AP Physics 1 question, probably Unit 2, that's going to ask about the forces and things that are happening on this box. So I want to go through, it's a very popular question, and give you an idea of what you can expect on this AP Physics 1 level. So the first question I'm going to ask are, what are the forces acting on these three boxes? Essentially, we're going to have a frictionless, incline, uh, frictionless plane, frictionless, and this has M3 on it. Is going to be a rope over a pulley, and M2 and M1 are sitting on top of one another, and the system is not moving. So right now, the system is at rest. I'm going to say, what are the forces acting on the three boxes? So essentially, draw a free body diagram for each of the three boxes. And if M3 is greater than M2, and I remove M1 from the system without you know, moving anything or disrupting M2, what's going to happen to M3? Is it going to stay still? Is it going to accelerate, move to contact speed? pretty much going to have to talk about what's going to happen to M3. We're then going to write an expression for the acceleration of M3, even if it's zero, and then sketch a V versus T and an A versus T graph for M2 once I remove M1. So first, I'm going to look at each box, and I'm going to draw an F, a free body diagram for each box. So if I look at M1, I know that M1 has a force due to gravity, right? So Fg of 1. And we know that the floor is going to push back up onto the box of force normal of the floor. But I also know that 2 is also going to put a force, and this is a common misconception, guys. It does not put Fg onto this box. It puts a normal force, force of the normal that 2 puts on 1. Now, on this box, M2 has a force due to gravity, and it has an opposite force pushing up on it, the force of the normal of two of box 1 onto box 2. M3 has the force due to gravity of 3, and it also has the force of the normal from the table. Now, you may be asking about the force of tension here. Because the system is at rest, I am not going to include the force of tension. That force of tension would really only be applying if there was some sort of acceleration or some sort of F net. So now what happens if I eliminate one from this system? So if I get rid of one now, so now we're going to be looking at the second question. If I were to get rid of this, right? we would see that the force is acting in the direction of motion. We'd have an FG down this way. So this system would want to accelerate even if M3 was much greater than this because this is friction. So once I remove M1, what I would see is that on M3, I still have the force due to gravity, and I still have the force of the normal from the table, but now I'm going to have this force of tension. And because there's no force acting this way, FT is going to supply some sort of F net. And if there is some sort of F net, that means that the box must accelerate. So if M3 is much greater and I remove M1, what's going to happen to M3? It's going to accelerate in this direction right here. Now to solve for how much it's going to accelerate, well, that's really easy. We can use Newton's second law. A equals the F net divided by M total of the system. So first I'm going to try and define F net. If I look at these two boxes here, I'm going to say that F net, I'm going to call this the direction of motion this way. So this is going to be the DOM, and I'm going to call that positive. Anything that goes back against it is negative. So we have the F net is going to be, we have the force of gravity on mass 2. Then we would have a negative force of tension. That would be like right here. That would be FT negative. And then we'd have a positive FT. That would go this way. This would be a positive FT. And then that would really be it. And I can clean this up a little bit and I can get rid of these two. They're going to cancel each other out. And then we just say that's M2G. So if I want to find the acceleration of this system, it's going to be M2G divided by mass total, which is just going to be M2 plus M3. And this right here confirms what we said in number two, that yes, it's going to accelerate. There's going to be accelerate. This is not equal to zero. Now moving away from box three, if I were to look at just the box two here, and I look at a V versus T graph, and I also look at an A versus T graph, remember I call this direction positive, and we know that the thing accelerating the box is going to be gravity. Now, 
it's not 9.8 meters per second squared. It's not 10 meters per second squared. That's for an object in free fall, right? This M3 is going to slow it down, but it's still going to be a constant acceleration because the F net, this M2G, is going to be constant. So I'm going to have some positive acceleration. Now, if you call downward negative, then your A would be constant down here. And I know that A is really just defined as a, posit a change in V over T. So I know if I start with no velocity for M2, it is going to increase and get bigger in the positive direction. And because the slope of a V versus T graph is equal to A, if A is constant, the slope must be constant as well. I hope that helped look at a couple different forces on boxes, how we can prove that there is an acceleration of a system, and how we can draw some, just sketch some basic graphs of V versus T versus A versus T. If it helped, give the video a thumbs up, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.